barriers separate, they don't contact. When they do, the contact barrier does both. That is why BM called it contact barrier. It separates and it unites. It brings together and it separates. The reverse perspective. Right In the re exactly, uh, as yeah, a reverse the, perspective. The, 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 yeah, the isomorph of it. Exactly, right? Yes. Now, what is disturbing of the analysis of dreams and the resistance to a dream being analyzed is that in some way we are challenging the integrity of the skin, aren't we? We are bringing to, co to consciousness something that the dream is trying to keep buried in the unconscious. Mm -hmm. Hence the resistance that dreams offer to being analyzed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cut it open. Exactly. You know the joke about how many analysts does it take to change a light bulb? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, in the first place, you have to see if the light bulb wants to be changed. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the resistance of, of the contact barrier. You have to see if the contact barrier wants to be <coughs> turned around, the inside out. Right? That's the resistance. All right. The confusion, uh, I have a confusion about this. Um, because it feels like there's a blurring in this area of these concepts of function versus factor. Factor, thank you. And this c concept of the contact barrier seems to, it seems to be describing a function, mm -hmm. even though it's a noun. Um, it, it, there seems to be a... a oh, I know, I know what you say. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, there seems to be a dreaming function um, sim that resembles osmosis or something like that. Mm -hmm. And and it seems like Bion is, is, is gathering all of that under the alpha function. He's saying that that's the alpha function operating during sleep or something like that. But I Not only during sleep, he says okay. that it's... Mm -hmm when we are asleep and when we are awake, that actually the dreaming, and thanks for noticing that, uh, that the dreaming as a function of the personality goes on day and night. Mm -hmm. But of course, he doesn't mean that that we call a dream. I had a dream, right? He just means the function of creating of putting alpha elements, or rather beta elements into alpha elements and putting them together happens during the day and during the night. During the night, that shows up or manifests itself as our dreams, and our dreams become visible, right? Because when we turn off the lights, when we close our eyes, when we take a break from the external reality, we are in the best condition to be in touch with our dreams. And that brings me to what I was going to say, which is that it, it, it seems like that what's special about this uh, subset of the alpha function is that it is only internal, that it, it, it's only operating on beta elements that are internal, and that the beta elements from the senses are not a factor. Oh, yes. And no, but sometimes, uh, sometimes don't we, when we're dreaming at night, you may have a sensation, yeah, like a blanket over your feet, mm -hmm. and that may uh -huh. get incorporated through the alpha function into your dream. Is yes, 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 That's correct, true. correct, yeah. right. Or you hear a telephone ringing, mm -hmm. yeah. right, and here you dream that there is an alarm right. somewhere. Right. You don't That's dream true. that your telephone is ringing if you're asleep, right. but you incorporate the sound of the ringing into a dream where the sound fits. So there the sense is coming from the outside, the stimulation is yeah. coming from the outside. Most of them, I think, what you're talking about is that most of them are coming from the inside, don't you? Yeah. Um, when I, when I, you I, sleep, what, yes. What I'm trying to, what I guess I'm trying to do is, is I'm trying, it, it feels like, um, to be honest, with this concept of the alpha function, he's, 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 bringing together these things that are that seem separate thinking and dreaming under one function 
And I'm trying to <coughs> separate them again and try to understand what makes them different from each other. And he's trying to talk about what... Yes, I think that will become clearer to you next time mm -hmm. when we will talk about the grid. Then you will see uh, how uh, thinking and dreaming are actually animals of the same species, mm -hmm. though in different uh, stages of evolution. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. You would say uh, an elephant comes from the mammoth, but it's not a mammoth. Mm -hmm but it's an evolution of the mammoth. Mm -hmm. uh, thinking, or, or what we call intellectual thinking, or scientific thinking, comes from this very early thinking called alpha function. Is that what he's calling thought? Because an interesting thing he says in here is that first there's thought, then there's thinking. Mm -hmm. Correct. Now, let me go back a minute to what he was saying, and then we go back to what you say, okay. right? Um, you brought um, a, an interesting question, that is, it seems that, I'm paraphrasing you now, right, if I'm not paraphrasing you accurately, correct me, um, that Bion calls the uh, contact barrier a function mm -hmm. coming from or being done, created by the alpha function, and yet it also seems a structure. Mm -hmm. You said factor, I would say a, structure a, better, factor, yeah. a, a structure, not a factor, mm -hmm. because um, the um, contact barrier is not present in the baby at birth. It has to be created mm -hmm. with the help of the mother, mm -hmm. right? So it's a structure. Mm -hmm. Well, it is both, Bion would say. It would s it Bion would say it is a living structure that the alpha function has to keep in check by creating and recreating through alpha function, more and more alpha elements. Therefore, the alpha function has to go on lifelong. It mm -hmm. can't stop. If it stops, you're stuck, right? It's like breathing. You don't stop breathing. Or your metabolism, it doesn't stop. Your metabolism, whether you're awake or you're asleep, whether you're ill or you're healthy, your metabolism has to go on. If it would stop, you die, right? Uh, so it is a function that creates a structure, and the structure is an evidence of the function. It's both, right? Mm -hmm. It's be uh, same happens with our skin. I mean, we think that our skin is a fixed structure and that it only grows as our bodies grow. Now, this is not true. Our epidermis is all the time shedding invisible dead mm -hmm epidermal cells. If it weren't that from down below, we are all the time proliferating new epi new dermis, then after probably a day or two, we would shed our skin and we would be then exposed to nothing. That would be horrible, right? Same thing happens with the contact barrier. Mm -hmm. It has to... It has to regenerate exactly again and again. That is one of the reasons why we need rest, right? Mm -hmm. As therapist or as whatever, we need to go to sleep, right? In order to take a break <laughs> and to just regenerate alpha function try where it gets less eroded, but during daytime, right, when we are working relating to each other, the stresses of life and so on, our contact barriers are all the time being eroded and our ability to recreate them has to be pretty strong, particularly if your life is very stressful. Again, for instance, um, soldiers in Iraq or uh, surgeons that have to all the time deal with life and death issues are in big stress, right? These people are prone to discharge their untransformed alpha yeah. elements, therefore beta elements, in the form of physical symptoms, for instance. Or hallucinations. Or hallucinations, yeah. or actions, so acting out, yeah. right? So when, so when we do analysis or therapy and uh, interpret dreams and all of that, you said we were challenging the contact barrier. So, in, in a way, um, the therapeutic process 
in a way, can erode. Yes. Or, or can cause a contact barrier to have movement to it. Um, so, it, but with the intent of, I guess, um, creating at the same time more alpha elements through in the meaning. So it is both challenging the content barrier and trying to structure it further at the same time. With well, that. I would say, what, what do we do in a therapy process, uh, psychoanalytically oriented? Um, in the first place, if a patient is a patient and comes for uh, a dynamic therapy, it is because something he feels is not all right in the way his mind works. Mm -hmm. Patients don't come because they feel so good in the skin, right? Mm -hmm. uh, something needs to be repaired because it's not all right. Mm -hmm. um, we hope that among other um, operations we do is we help to modify something in their alpha function or in the contact barriers so that the patient feels more in harmony or that the contact barrier is more in harmony with the structure of the personality. We hope to increase the ability of the patient to alphabetize, that is to transform into alpha elements and giving psychic structure in a better way than he is doing by himself before he came. A patient has a psychosomatic illness, for instance. Some of you were here when I taught the psychosomatic seminar, right? Well, psychosomatic illnesses would be an example of patients that cannot perform to satisfaction or adequately alpha function. Therefore, part of their emotional experiences go directly into the bodies in the form of a psychosomatic illness. And they develop a uh, gastric ulcer or high blood pressure or migraine or something, right? We hope to help them to improve or to further develop the alpha function, and if something is faulty in the contact barrier due to the alpha function being faulty, we want to undo that, right? And we would hope that the healing of that will be done between sessions, mm -hmm. right? That's why it's terribly interesting, right? In the first place, that sessions don't have to last forever. Sessions have to have 45, 50 minutes, an hour, I mean, have to be limited to a period of time during which we do that operation, and then we have to leave the patient alone, or rather, the alpha function alone, to see how, after we have moved that that was not all right, how does that regenerate, mm. right? Suppose that you have scar tissue. You know that there, is some, there are some people, what you call that, that have the tendency to develop, I think you call it keloids, uh -huh. mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Keloids, right? That is an exaggeration of scar tissue if you have had surgery or injury. Instead of just scarring normally, it swells up and it becomes a very exaggerated scar. Well, it's skin, it's all right, you're not bleeding through the keloid, but something is exaggerated there. You don't need such a um, swelling up of a scar. So what would a plastic surgeon do? It would do what we do as psychodynamic psychotherapists with the contact barrier. He would try to remove that exaggerated scar tissue called a keloid because you don't need that and it's not aesthetic and it may even be a bit painful, right? To then do something, stitch it up in a different way, uh, ways that plastic surgeons know, and then you have to go home and it has to scar all alone. The plastic surgeon doesn't make it scar, he can put the stitches in. The scarring has to happen by itself. Those who came to Caper, so you were when Caper came, mm -hmm. weren't you? I was not. Y you were. Mm -hmm. uh, when Caper brought this interesting metaphor, right, je le pensé de la guérie, that came from some French doctor who said, uh, I 
dress the wounds, God makes them heal, <laughs> right? This is exactly what he meant. I mean, we deal with the wounds or with the scar tissue in the um, contact barrier, but then the healing has to happen by itself. We can't make it heal. And if you observe what happens between sessions, you have a session, something gets mobilized, emerges, you analyze it, and then when the patient comes back and says, I had a dream, mm. you can probably recognize in the dream the elements of what happened in the session before. Of course, in a transformed way, it's not that the patient will dream the session, but the dream will show what's been modified, right, in that session and what the mind of the patient